Outburst, a Todd Mills Mystery, Book 4, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher Scribble Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 1998, narrator Eric Ost. Chapter 24. As much as he wanted to call it off, at least for a while, there was no stopping it. As much as Todd wanted to brush away all the television nonsense, then rush to Rollins and tell him the wound was nothing, and no one had been endangered, there was no way Todd could. They were all caught in a rock slide, the one that Todd had helped let loose, and both Rollins and he were swept away, overwhelmed as much by the arrest of Christopher Kinney as by their jobs. The six o'clock show was well underway, and in the world of television, at least, breaking stories like this were the gifts of the gods. We're all set, called Bradley from behind. Todd was turned the other way, focused on Rollins, who was filling out some paperwork and conversing with several police officers, as if an artery had been cut instead of his neck being merely scratched. Rollins continued to keep the handkerchief firmly pressed against his neck. Hey, man, come on, pressed Bradley. We don't want to lose this. What? said Todd, turning around. We're ready. Let's do it. From Bradley's camera, a long cable snaked across the green lawn, down between two identical houses, and to the ENG van down on the street. So this was it, thought Todd. They were going to get what they'd come for. A live shot from the scene. Later, they'd edit the tape of Christopher Kinney fleeing and resisting the police, perhaps. Use it on the 10 of 10 broadcast, but... For now, they were going to show the police stuffing Kinney into a squad car. Todd took a deep breath, for this was happening way too fast. He wanted to tell the police to slow down, to wait just a few more seconds, to hold that pose and that suspect right there, but of course that was impossible. Any news that was worth its weight could never wait. Here, said Bradley, thrusting out both a stick mic and an earpiece. Todd took them, grasping the mic and jabbing the small, clear plastic device into his ear, Without even thinking, just as he was positioning the wire behind his neck, and out of sight, a voice started bleeding into his ear. God, this is so great! Todd lifted the mic to his mouth, looked at the camera now trained on him, and said, Nan? Todd? replied the producer from the station in the distant suburb. You're the best. I mean, this is so hot. I can't believe it. This guy's a drag queen, isn't he? Isn't that what he is? I... I... Do you really think he killed that cop? I mean, like, wow. I mean, this is the first gay drag queen killer I've ever heard of. Todd flinched, and all he could say was, Who said he's gay? Well, he's a drag queen, isn't he? Nan, technically, I think a drag queen means someone who's a performer. But the politically correct word for this guy, Oh, come on, Todd, is transgendered. Look at him, for Christ's sake, just look, she demanded, unable to hide the joy in her voice. You know, I bet the Nationals are going to pick this up. Nan's words made it all so clear, and suddenly, Todd was terrified. Whatever he spit out in the next few minutes would stick. Whatever he said about Chris Kinney, whatever they soon showed on TV, would be how viewers would judge him for weeks, if not forever. And judge him they would, no doubt about it. In particular... If the public now saw Kenny as something different from them, as someone from beyond their world and understanding, they would take his deviance as definitive proof, pronouncing him guilty for the murder of Officer Mark Forrest. Shit. Todd wanted to pull the plug on Bradley's camera, for he couldn't think, couldn't figure out how to come at this. Todd, called Bradley, we're going to lose him. Don't you dare, hollered Nan in Todd's earpiece. Todd turned around, saw them leading the handcuffed Kenny to one of the squad cars. Listen, she barked from the control room of the station. Tom Rivers is going to do a quick lead-in and toss it to you, Todd. We're five seconds away. It was happening. The producer was doing a countdown. Todd could hear Rivers' voice in his earpiece, and then Todd was live. He opened his mouth, but for a terrifying split second, his mind went blank. Nothing. Empty. What the hell was he supposed to say? He stared at the lens. Go, Todd, you're on. For Christ's sake, you're live, screamed Nan via IFB transmission. Uh, they weren't there, the words. They weren't for me. This had never happened before, and all of a sudden, his heart took off in panic. Shit. A second of silence on television was equal to an hour. Todd, Nan shouted. Todd opened his mouth, but... 
but nothing. Then he looked to the side, saw what the camera was also seeing, and then amazingly everything kicked in and his mouth went on autopilot. There's been a dramatic breakthrough in the murder of Minneapolis Park Police Officer Mark Forrest, began Todd, his voice somehow smooth, somehow belying his racing heart. And what you're seeing is a live shot of the arrest of a suspect by the name of Christopher Kitty, who was apprehended not more than five minutes ago by a barrage of Minneapolis police. As you can see, officers are leading Mr. Kitty away as I speak. In a few moments, he'll be taken by squad car to the main Minneapolis Police Department in City Hall, where he will be formally booked for the murder of Mark Forrest. And while Mr. Kinney is now cooperating, everything appears to be going smoothly, continued Todd as Kinney was placed in a car. That most definitely was not the case just a few minutes ago. As the squad car took off, its lights twirling, but its sirens silent. Bradley brought the camera back over, now completely focusing on Todd, who went on to explain how an anonymous caller had telephoned the WLAK television station Late this afternoon, the caller reported Todd claimed to have seen a strange car by the Mississippi the night Mark Forrest was gunned down. Todd went on about how the license plate number provided by the tip caller had led him and the police here. What started out as a simple questioning, however, turned quite dramatic when Kenny fled and then battled the police. Todd relayed nearly everything in a crisp, sharp manner, but failed. For some reason, even he didn't understand to mention one important thing. No, he didn't want to unleash that. Perhaps later. Perhaps on the 10 p.m. Once he had more information, but not now. I'm sure there'll be more information coming within the next few hours, concluded Todd, getting ready to toss it back to Tom Rivers. But for now... He's in drag! shrieked Nan into his earpiece. Jesus Christ, you gotta tell him that! That's the best part! The juiciest, Todd! Todd, you couldn't tell from the visual that Kenny was in drag. Uh, that's the latest information. Tune in to the 10 of 10 report for the very latest. For WLAK, this is investigative reporter Todd Mills. He heard it, her screaming via the microwave connection. Nan Miller's voice was perfectly clear, cursing Todd for what he'd left out. Todd, however, just stood there staring at the camera in silence waiting for the signal that he was off air, and eventually they had no choice, for Todd just stood there motionless and quiet, forcing them to cut him. As soon as the red light atop Bradley's camera ceased burning, Todd plucked the earpiece from his ear and tossed that and the mic at Bradley. Hey, said the photographer, catching them both in his left hand. You all right? Todd shrugged and turned away. Off to the side were two cops shaking their heads and trying to make sense of all this. One of the other squad cars was now backing up into the alley, turning and heading slowly away. But where was he? Where was Rollins? Todd scanned the small backyard, searching for him. Yet Rollins was not to be seen. Of course, Todd must have missed it, but Rollins, as the arresting officer, had certainly taken off in the same squad car as Kenny. Shit. And then Todd just stood there, his mind shifting, looking around, running it all through his head. Yet again, from the phone call to the moment of the arrest of Christopher Kinney, he should have been pleased, even thrilled. Any reporter would kill for something so hot. Yes, once again, he'd witnessed virtually every critical step in this bizarre story, from the murder on the Stone Arch Bridge, to the discovery of the body in the Mississippi, and now the arrest of a suspect, a guy in drag, no less, who'd already been once arrested and charged in a cop killing. So what felt so wrong? He couldn't tell, not yet, but every part of Todd's body began to flood with dread. He might be a good investigative reporter, even a great one, but he knew this was way too easy. Way too insanely easy. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew, reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.